Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. L.A.'s Journal by Emmy Castaneris is an adventure story about a mortal teenager named Emily Castle and a immortal vampire with a soul father, Daniel Sangelos, who set out on a journey to find Emily's mother named Ellie. Ellie was thought to have died years ago. However, that's not true. Ellie is alive, and now Daniel and Emily must race to find her. Although Marie Irma Castaneris was born in the Philippines, she's lived her entire life as a Canadian writer from Windsor, Ontario, an avid sports fan, a single mother to two young adults. Emmy has been writing since she was 13. Her writing varied from poetry, story, speeches, musical lyrics, and music. Her first novel was written during her time off while on maternity leave. It only took six months to write the book. However, it took 16 years before she decided to publish. She believes that everything needs time to grow and develop, and she says sometimes you just need to trust yourself before you take that leap of faith. Emmy Maria Irma Castaneris, author of Ellie's Journal, joins us on This Week in America. Maria, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. I'm so honored to be here. It is our pleasure, and you've done such a nice job with this book. I mentioned just a little bit. Didn't want to give away too much, but boy, you've got everything going in the story. You've got adventure, <laughs> suspense. Uh, you build it up. I love the characters. Nice job oh. with the book, Ellie's Journal. Let's talk about the inspiration for writing the book. Where did this idea come from? The idea came from ba basically just to my passion for writing. That's what really drove it. I... One day I always sit down to start to write and I always start writing like short, short stories. And for this one, I, as I was writing, I just got to a point where I realized this is not going to be a two page story. And at that point I decided well, I'm going to continue. I'm going to commit to the characters and to the story and see it to the end. Really. How much fun was that creating this world, creating these characters, creating the adventure, the tension, the storyline? How much fun was that for you? That was really fun. <laughs> I found that while I was writing the characters, it was it was like all these characters and their qualities are what I love the best. And tying them all together, putting them in the situations um, was like a labor of love, really. In my mind, it was a movie in my mind. <laughs> Well, it, it comes across that way as you're reading it. There's a great visual aspect to the book. And the book is L.A.'s Journals by Emmy Castaneris. I'll give you all the information where the book's available, do all the spellings uh, later in the program. You just go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and a link on directly to uh, Maria's website, get information on the book there. Why did it take you so long to publish? And what motivated you to finally do it? I mentioned that gap of, of like 16 years. You had it there, and it's like, okay. What made you decide now is the time to bring Ellie's journal to the world? Okay, well, when I first wrote it 16 years ago, and uh, I came, I decided to publish at the time, I just wasn't ready. Life got in the way. Um, there was way too many barriers facing me. And you know what? Sometimes first-time writers have that feeling where they don't feel like their work is good enough. And I was no different. But what finally motivated me was basically when I figured out my why. The why should I do it? And the answer was simple. I like writing stories and I wanted to share that with everybody. And I knew that some may like it, some may not. But the ones that did, um, that knowing that was good enough for me. Well, I mentioned in the beginning, you said you had to learn just to trust yourself. And that really, what you just described, that is trusting yourself. It took a while, and then, and then you thought, okay, now's the time to proceed. Absolutely. Taking that leap of faith was where you have to let go of all your fear, um, because that basically was one of the barriers. And once I did that, took that step, and again, yeah, trusted myself to know that, yes, I can do this. Ellie's Journal, it's a great story, a unique story. You talk about the purpose of writing in two different points of view. Example, Emily, the main character, first person, narrative, third person. How did you develop that approach for, for Ellie's Journal? Oh, that's a good question, Rick. Um, I wanted the characters to relate to the main character. I'm sorry, I wanted the readers to relate to the main character. So writing the first person kind of made sense. You always want to get into someone's mindset and thoughts. But I didn't want the book to be totally in one person's perspective. 
So writing it in a third person narrative allowed me to move the story forward. And by doing that, I was able to accomplish those little exciting um, points of it. And from a reading standpoint, we get a, like a couple of different perspectives. It really is a unique approach and something that uh, readers are finding quite uh, entertaining about the book. Ellie's Journal by Emmy Castaneris. And I'm going to spell that for you. If you're going to Google, <laughs> that's C-A-S-T-A-N-A-R-E-S. Her website is mecastaneris.com. Book's available at writerspublic.com. It's also available at uh, writersrepublic.com. Also available the usual places. And if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to Emmy Maria's website and, and get information there. You talk about the journey that you were on, writing it, waiting all those years, finally deciding now is the right time. When you saw that book for the first time, when you opened it up and you look and you see your title, your name, your book cover, what was that like? And I'm asking that because I'm sure you can remember that like it was a couple of hours ago. Yeah, yeah, pretty well. Uh, honestly, it was very surreal. It was, it was, I couldn't believe that I actually got to that point. Um, after all these years of seeing the manuscript tucked away in my little yes. file folder, um, it was seeing and then seeing it in print you could say it was a huge milestone moment really i can imagine the excitement of an author especially that first book when you see it in print and in the video if you go to our youtube channel you can link on directly by going to our website this week in america.us and maria's background a copy of the book we've got the book cover up on the video as we're doing this an excellent job on the book cover as well which which adds to the 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 overall story the book cover is excellently done it captures your attention as you're looking at that you know it's interesting in, in reading the story ellie's journal emmy castaneris our guest on the program all authors it seems maybe work some part of themselves into the story is there anything any personal side of maria that you incorporated into this book Funny thing you asked that because as you uh, when I was when I was writing the book at the time, I never really thought about that. But years later, when I actually looked at the book and the whole and the story, I started to realize that yes, I was actually conveying my core values. In essence, I brought into the story and the characters these values, and these values are basically family first, teamwork, meaning you can't get anything accomplished by yourself, and service always finding ways to help people without repayment or reward, really. Well, they're values that you know well. They've served you well in your life, so why not carry that over into the characters of the book, which <laughs> makes for... so much. The characters are so much fun. <laughs> that, yes, yes. Ellie's Journal, M.E. Castaneris, our, our guest on the program. Out of the characters I mentioned, and there are several others in their main characters, who did you enjoy writing the most, and, and why did that character bring you so much satisfaction? Ooh, um, actually, I enjoyed writing all of them because each of them had qualities I had fun writing about and then finding ways to take all their qualities and tie them all together. That was really, really enjoyable. So no major one, but I do love the main character because of her strength and her vulnerability. And there's so much more that she's got potential for. But overall, all the characters, I loved them. The book is a fantasy. It's an adventure. It's a mystery as well. Let's talk about introducing that mystery element. Sometimes that's tricky for 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 an author to actually convey that. You did an excellent job in, in working mystery. And how did you come up with that that concept? Well, everybody loves a good mystery. Yes. I mean, I do. So really, it was fun incorporating that into the book. It it, it just kind of made sense. Um, to have it there. Like, like, let's give the reader some adventure and keep them guessing. That was my intent, really. And you delivered on that. The book is Ellie's Journal, Emmy, Emmy Castaneris, our guest on the program. Our website, emmycastaneris.com, writersrepublic.com, one of the websites you can uh, buy the book, of course, Amazon, the usual places. If you go to our website, you can link on and get all of that information is there a target audience you have in mind? Whenever I see something like this, it's like yeah, pretty much everybody. But I know in marketing, you sort of target uh, a specific audience. Is there a target audience you had in mind as you were writing this? I think I was targeting more on the ages between 13 to 25, just because my book isn't a hard read. 
not a lot of big words, just a lot of visuals, but it was a good, easy read. But I've been finding, while talking to a few people, that it's been liked by those who don't read often and just people who like something that's easy and, in- and interesting to actually finish. You know, there's a lot to be said for that. Sometimes you have a tendency, writers have a tendency to get a little bit complicated and then you sort of need to to have a chart as you're reading the book to figure out who's connected to what and, and what happened three chapters back. This is a book that you can pick up, read, and enjoy. You mentioned yes. a little bit before your core background, your core themes, uh, uh, the ethics that have propelled you to where you are today. Is there a core message to the story besides a good story? Anything you'd like, if you read the book, you're going to take something away f- with this. Yeah, I think the core message is that family comes in different forms. And no matter what form it comes in for you, there's always one aspect that remains the same. And it's love. Love is makes us sacrifice, love um, makes us persevere, and love makes us even stronger as a unit. I think that is the core that carries out through the whole book, because with f- family, there is that aspect, and love will move you forward. In the book, there's a journal that plays a key role. You've got new characters that come in throughout the book. Did you know where you were going when you started the book? Did you have a strict outline? And it's like, okay, I'm going to bring in uh, Gideon here, and I'm going to have him interpret the journal this way in this particular part of the book. Or did it evolve as you were writing and telling the story? I would say it's a little bit of both. I had a little bit of structure, but then as you're writing, sometimes it just develops into something else or something else. I had an idea for something, but that wasn't going to work because I wanted to see this character do this yes. instead and make the reader enjoy this factor instead. So yeah, I would say it's a little bit of both really. You know, often you hear writers talk about writer's block. I'm always fascinated by the other side of that, which is I can't stop my thoughts coming. I need to go to <laughs> bed and I've got this story that's in my head and I've got to stay at the typewriter and, and, and the computer and keep doing this. Uh, is it difficult sometimes to shut it off? It's like, okay, I've, I've got a real life here in addition to this and, and sort of turn it off. I think these characters that almost would be, would be in the, the back of your mind throughout the day. Oh, yes. It was very hard to turn that one off when I had, especially since it being the first book and these all these characters were being developed. um, It was there was a moment where I did put it down for a month. But then after a while, you you just you get committed to them and you can get committed to the story and you just needed to finish. They just needed to have an ending of some sort. And that's what motivated me to keep going. What are you working on now? Ooh, book number two. Yes, yes. Continuation of this one, yes. So you'll see the same characters a little bit and some new ones and a little bit of a different storyline too. When you were writing this one, Ellie's Journal, did you have in mind a sequel, a second book, or did this just sort of happen as you were completing this this first one? The thought did cross my mind, um, but it wasn't until I actually reviewed the characters again and thought to myself, you know what? Let's write the second one and and let's let's maybe do a third one and finish it off. Oh, so maybe a third. I think we got news on this. Maybe yes. a third will be coming so, up. These characters are so amazing that it's almost like they need to be developed a little more. You need to know more about them. So and, and it's it's almost like my responsibility and duty. Okay, let's develop them. Let's go forward. Let's see where they're else what else they're gonna do. Well, fans of Ellie's Journal will be glad to know number two is coming, probably in number three. It looks like that's going to happen. Ellie's Journal by Emmy Castaneris, who's our, our guest on the program. A few minutes left here. Let's talk a little bit about maybe a message you want to get across on Ellie's Journal, somebody that's thinking about it out there that we haven't covered during the course of the mm-hmm. interview. Uh, anything to new readers, what they can expect in, in Ellie's Journal? Basically, um, I would say just take the journey. Enjoy the story. And enjoy the characters. Um, it's get whatever you want out of it. Um, take the two hours out of your time and just get traveled into a, a different world and enjoy it, really. Because sometimes we need to get out of our busy lives, out of our busy world, and just have a little fantasy. Growing up, were you an avid reader? Is this where this this all began in, in thinking about someday maybe writing? And I mentioned that you're accomplished in other areas as well, writing speeches, musical lyrics, music. Uh, talk about growing up. Were you a, a, an avid reader? I loved reading about characters. I loved people. So um, I believe 
I did more writing than I did reading, but I had to do more reading in order to develop myself. So yes, as it was a little bit of both, but the creativity side of me was always the driving passion. Write more characters, see where you can go, write a story and develop from there. Who influences you? If you've got like a few hours, I want to pick up a book and read for a while. Who do you like to read? Who, who do you enjoy reading? Ooh, the first book I actually did read and really got involved with was V.C. Andrews. For some reason, I just loved how they developed their characters and they kept going and you can follow along. But, um, I would say, yeah, that sort of feel for the character development was where I kind of was my base. A couple minutes left. I'm always fascinated by this. In developing characters, sometimes you think authors really enjoy this almost too much where you've got like 20 people that are main mm. characters in the book and you're trying to juggle them. How do you arrive at the right number? In your book, Ellie's Journal, how did you come up with the with the characters? Oh, well, the characters basically stem from the main character. And then I knew the char- that main character needed a support, um, which is her father. And then they needed um, more people to be part of that family that was yes. unique. So the uniqueness of each character and the qualities they had had to create a unique sort of bond. And the more I wrote about it, once that bond was established, I knew that was enough characters I needed to put in. Got about 30 seconds left here. What's this been like for you? The book is published. You were holding the book. You're getting feedback on the book. People are buying the book. We're talking about the book. This has to be an exciting time in your life. It is actually. It's very, sometimes I still can't believe I'm, I've done this. I, I really can't. <laughs> yes. I really can't. It's a, uh, it's very, uh, again, for, for surreal, but uh, I'm enjoying it. I really am. I'm really establishing myself in terms of a, believing that yes i've done something and i'm going to keep going doing it and because i love to write and i do love people and so that's just the path i'm deciding to take really once you make that commitment you have to go forward the book is ellie's journal by our guest on the program m.e castaneras that's c-a-s-t-a-n-a-r-e-s our website is mecastaneras.com. The book's available at writersrepublic.com, Amazon, the usual places. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, all of those links are there. You just click them and we'll take you to information on Maria's book. Maria, this has been fun. Congratulations on the success of Ellie's Journal. Good luck with the sequel. Love to talk about that as well. Thank you for spending some time with us on the program. Thank you so much, Rick. I really enjoyed being here and talking to you. It was fun having you on the program. Our guest, Emmy Castaneras, her book, Ellie's Journal, you'll find it on our website, thisweekinamerica.us, back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again, thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.